Welcome to the Reality Revolution. It's a fantastic day. I get to talk to Dan Radio Style. Welcome to the Reality Revolution. Dan Radio Style is, has a wonderful channel. Of course, if you've probably listened to him on, you've probably seen his. He talks about everything Neville Goddard and consciousness. And he has that unique radio style that I love so much that sounds like the classic talk radio from back in the day. And so it's like the perfect mix. And you add a, a lot of analysis and to, to the some of the Neville stuff I've taken you've taken the stuff from Neville and helped me to understand it and apply it in my life and so I was really excited to get a chance to talk to you uh, about your experience with manifestation and consciousness so welcome to the reality revolution Dan man I, I, I it's so awesome to be here first off reality revolution I love the name this the second you connected with me and one I, I checked out one of your videos but it was the name and just everything and the whole feel when I got to it. So thank you for being one of the people on the oh, leading man, edge thanks. and trying to make a difference and trying to help wake people up in this world. It's it's awesome. But yeah, I appreciate it. I love doing this work. Neville's uh, an amazing guy. He's a genius who, when you look at what he was saying and then really put it relative to the time he was saying it, right. this guy was so on the edge of what was acceptable. Like it was a cult following at the time, but now through a lot of this right. the secret and all this other stuff, he he's become very mainstream and he is, he's brilliant, but he does kind of speak in that old tongue, if you will. But well, I, yeah, I've, I've, as I've explained it, and as I've tried to start understanding, I'm still a student of Neville. I don't, I, I or, do or not do, claim that to be an stop? expert. Yeah. I, there's so much, yeah. but when I'm thinking about Neville, he's talking to people in, in the sixties and seventies right. that were taught the Bible as kids in their in the 40s and 30s so there it's a, it's a it's even more than we can imagine strong biblical teaching which is part of their subconscious understanding of god so he's reaching to those people saying hey all that stuff you learned it still verifies what i'm talking about and that's the brilliance of not it, right? just that but where he was basically punching his elbows out was not only was he trying to keep it in context of the bible but he was also saying hey and fyi the bible's more symbolic than literal Right. And that was like, what? Like people, you know what I mean? That was, you right. did not do that. And right. so it, there's the, Goddard and there's was amazing. there's a person right now that's probably listening to us. I'm sure. That is, has the experience with the Bible and said, that's impossible. That part of the Bible, there's no way that could have happened. And they've literally turned off the Bible in their mind because they've seen some discrepancy or contradiction with the Bible. So what's exciting is when you come back to Neville, Neville says, oh, that stuff doesn't matter. Well, and from a, from a literal standpoint, right. I mean, you're right. There's some kind of absurdities, like you know, two, right. two people created the entire human race. Like theoretically, we should all probably have an arm growing out of our forehead based off of the way genetics work. <laughs> right. So, I mean, it's probably a little different than that. And I think yes, there had to have been some symbology. So Goddard was really groundbreaking in that regard, and I think does such an amazing job, kind of pointing it out, but relating it to something that people could kind of like lean on you know what i mean like a wall of a building like okay i'm on my my religious belief talk to me and and goddard kind of came at him all right here's some crazy hocus pocus but trust me walk with me and you'll see what happens and that's always the thing i say to people too is like i'd love you to prove me wrong that's what i want like right try it that's all i'm saying just give it a try pay attention to what you're doing and focusing and thinking and saying and and you'll start to see patterns and you know it's it's not like I need to sell you. I don't have a book. I'm not right. trying to sell a bridge. It's just an, a beautiful reality that we all get to ex experience. We we yeah. choose this. We either follow other people, other people's leads, or we're leading ourselves. Yeah, one or the other. Neville's saying, "Don't you don't have to believe me? Yeah, you can go and test this stuff out. That's what he's telling. Uh, he's not saying, uh, you know, listen to me and, and, and yeah, have I'm, faith.' Yeah, he wasn't. Yeah, exactly. He was like, <laughs> no, just, just seriously, go try this stuff. I and, right. Yeah, That's beautiful. what's so great. Uh, now, now it, what it, what do you think's the big key? I mean, what do you think in your not, uh, Goddard studies thus far? What, well, I mean, I've only really heavily got into three of his books, so I'll be honest. I, I'm not yeah. as, as deep as, as maybe many, but like, I don't know, from my standpoint, it really, I mean, they're one, and I'm going to start doing some shows on this, and I recommend for you too, and it's just, yeah. I want to probably gonna kind of preface it for both of us right now maybe, but yeah. his Law and Promise, which I did the whole whole book, but mm -hmm. apparently left out the last chapter for whatever reason. I don't know why. It must have been an accident. Not sure. Right. But that's the key. And from a biography I read of him, 
his whole thing became like at first and early on, it was all about the law. And then he said, Ooh, then no, it no, no, no. Promise, it became right. all about the promise and the law yeah. and the promise is a, a, a very good chapter, but it's one of those things where he's got, you know, 150 words and he's saying, you know, 5,000 words. Right. And, and it's just, it's like, it's really deep. And so I've been kind of really meditating on that. And I think yeah. that's going to be key because it really is. It's kind of that whole, the, what the promise and what he's talking about in the law of attraction and the, and the consciousness component of it. Right. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's very So there's powerful. different steps for me. My first exposure was The Feeling is a Secret. It's such an easy and wonderful book to read. And that was before I, I was like, wow. And then I started applying other principles like The Secret and Reality Transurfing. And all of them had this fundamental concept that f the feeling is the secret. Behind all of them was this simple fact. And so I kept on coming back to the feeling of the secret. So then the law of assumption, which I honestly didn't quite get, even though I had read a lot, was that he's not talking about the law of attraction. He's talking about assumption. And so it's the, the third level is what you're talking about that I'm starting to delve into is the promise. Uh, I just finished the lecture 1,260 days. He's, he starts going to a point where, okay, this is, he's going even further. And uh, some of it, you can, you can see he's talking about having this, this awakening where something came into his head and he's starting to see doves and lights are coming in. And, and so that is, you're right. I would love to delve more into that. My understanding of the promise, as best I understand, is that once you have awoken, you know, now you're this, the, the, this powerful spirit with an understanding of your powers during this time. And it's almost like you have a responsibility to lovingly imagine for those around you. And you don't have to worry about anything. You already know. It's for sure in your heart. Is, is that my better understanding of the promise? I think you're right on track. And okay. I, one of the other components I would add to it, though it seems oddly kind of off place for our discussion right now, but I would say that most of the masters that have come and visited us have definitely talked about getting ego in control. So it is, yes, when you have all of this knowledge and understanding of how it works and the consciousness and your ability to flow and control that and realizing that when you do get your energy to that place, you become attractive to other people because of how high your vibration is. People start to look up at you like you're something. And to be right. able to manage that responsibly starts to become part of that evolutionary journey as well. And right. so, yeah, but I think you're completely on track. And I would say, yes, cheers. <laughs> Well, yeah, um, but the, but I'm interested where he's, you know, he's starting to talk about another idea that is interesting with Neville that I'm trying to wrap my idea around. He, he, he is implying reincarnation. I don't think he really uses the word, but he's implying it. I haven't we seen it yet either, but no, right. I, I feel like he's, he's danced around. It. He danced, or, he dances around some very esoteric right. things. That but I'm... he's implying that it's not a linear, like we can wake up in 1940 the next time. Next time we could wake up in the year 3000. It's all a part of each going through these states that we're going through. Am I right with that with that interpretation or is that is that wrong? Yes, you can step in at any point. I'm not 100% sure how the consciousness of all that works because I've... It's like I, simultaneous under, time is occurring. Yeah, I'm, I, I feel like there's a part of ourselves that always chooses, chooses to... Is always consciousness of it, a conscious of itself, I should say. Like I'm always right. aware of me. And yes, I can choose to go up and down in time and backwards and forwards. And it really just depends on what I'm going there to do and experience. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, not to get, again, too weird, but many suggest that right now is a very unique time in history. And I think if we right. even look at what's going on in the world right now, you know, France, England, uh, uh, Puerto like Rico. The like, revolution. Yeah, there's a lot of crazy <laughs> stuff going on. A lot of people yeah. are rising up and saying, no, we're not standing for this anymore. Yeah. If you look at the way marketing campaigns and all these things have been in the past, they're all based upon how you lack, how you need me to make you better. And it's right. a changing thing where people are starting to realize, huh, this is me. And so, again, Goddard was a part of that awakening process. And there's many that suggest, and I might be on that same train that mm -hmm. there's something coming i don't know what exactly there's it a lot of like it. yeah and and some suggest a harvest some suggest something interesting this transition but i think we as a as a as a planetary unity as a bunch of people are raising our consciousness and as we do it shifts our whole planet it's it's like people have talked about mass prayer 
And that's right. another example where if you can get a bunch of people to just think the same thing at the same time, that has an enormous amount of power. And it has been documented. It's not talked about a lot because they don't like people to think that, hey, you can you can affect your own life, man. You don't need me. Yeah. I, and there's something palpable. There's a feeling that something's happening right now, like that old song, Something's Happening Here. Yeah. Uh, you, I think it when, as we're watching YouTube videos and we're seeing that everybody else is having this feeling, I, I get that, too. I have an episode, I don't know, to go beyond where I read about no, oh, no. Like talk, the law talk. of one and people are channeling, talking about moving into higher densities and Dolores Cannon is talking about. So there's other people kind of verifying that. I don't know how much people can attribute the truth to that, but it feels like there's some authenticity to this idea that we're we're moving to something bigger. Fortunately, there's this thing called law of confusion that allows people to kind of wake up at their own pace. Their so no matter pace. what, there's always this ability to go either way. I can not right. believe you or I can believe you. But channeling has been something. I mean, Jane Roberts is one of the big ones, I think, that goes back into, what, 73-ish right. and stuff like that. And that really started to take form and take off. And there's a lot of amazing information out there. <laughs> That Even has if supposedly come from other places. It's actually giving their own information from the channel. Well, yeah, exactly. exactly. It doesn't matter. The information itself from like Seth, like you're mentioning, yeah. there's something to it. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's very powerful stuff. And I mean, I, I was lucky enough to be um, very close to uh, three ladies in particular, probably four, but I wasn't really close to her. But the three ladies, my teacher and then the, my girlfriend and her mom, like were three of probably the most gifted people uh, yeah. It was just unreal. Um, and so, yeah, it's just one of those things where you, you will meet people that just are oddly open to it. And I, again, I think there's yeah. a level of purity and aligning chakras and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, there's things <laughs> you can do to help, you know, get that process a little more evolved. But ultimately, right. all of us can do it. It's just, you know, how well. We're just allowing ourselves. All that other stuff might be us saying, well, just a little bit longer. Exactly. Sometimes I well, get that interpretation, right? And Well, like Goddard even mentions in Clairvoyance. Uh, I forget which chapter it is, but in Your Faith is Your Fortune. He talks uh -huh. about how uh, basically a lot of people might be able to look at a financial report but not necessarily be able to read it. So, yeah, there's a lot of people that might very well see things and not know what they're seeing. Right. And so that's one thing people have asked about thought transmissions and other stuff I talk about, too. And it's like, yeah, they might know it's you. They might not. And that's the thing. That's where a lot of us aren't necessarily as attuned or paying attention to uh, what's going on around right. us as others. And again, I think that all ties into consciousness. I think as we expand our consciousness, you start to become more sensitive, more aware, more yeah. like it is weird. You notice weirder things that you never noticed before. It's, yeah. it's fascinating. So part of my um, being a student is the things I'm having the most difficulty understanding or have made mistakes talking about on the channel. And, and there's some powerful movements inside the Neville Goddard community and you've talked about it on, and you've discussed it, um, as I've noticed. So I want to learn from you uh, is two concepts, the okay. idea that everybody is you pushed out and then, the, and then manifesting a specific person, particularly as it relates to Neville. So uh, I, of course, I believe that everybody is, is me pushed out. I understand the basic concept of it. We're all tied. Well, There's a oneness yeah. in the unity. What's your basic concept of it? Let's start. There. I, there's a unity. We're all tied together. The, okay. I, when I, We're all and, one, and that the, whole the thing. The beautiful thing is when I see somebody else, I see myself in them. I, and, and I'm able to relate to them because I see that's me. Uh, there's also everybody I meet, tend to meet is a reflection. Like when I'm talking to you, I was attracted to you because you're talking about the same things as me. So in many ways, you're a reflection of me. And so it just naturally, I'm seeing a reflection of myself when I'm talking to you because it naturally came that way as me asking you, Hey, I want to interview you. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, that, and so I've said before, by the way, there's two ways that the us pushed out thing. Uh, at least I, I like to say it that way, but us pushed out is that if I dislike something and it's something that I do, like I'm just mean to people and I cut people off or whatever. And then mm -hmm. I, in my real life, I've got people that cut me off and that's sort of it's why it keeps this little vicious cycle right. going. So there's times like, I hate people that cut me off. And it's like, Wait, do you realize you cut people off too all the time? So there's that side of it. But to your point as well, I really respect this quality in this individual. I think they're really awesome. I really look up to them. You, people don't realize it's because that quality is in you. Right. That like a reflection. Yeah. So you see it for sure. So me, like I kind of say, we project onto people, us, 
Right. Um, and I think for sure I am way on board with the us pushed out being that. I mean, I even talked with this lady named Anya Vivarelli about that as well. Mm-hmm. And, and it was, you know, like, yeah, no, totally. We project our fears and all that kind of stuff. But I think when you start to get rid of some of those fears and other things, you start to actually see people for who they are. Right. And I, that's where I'm like, I think every one as you pushed out, I think is confusing to some anyways, is that there's this understanding or thought that, they're actually me. And if mm-hmm. they're actually me, then I should be able to do whatever I want with myself. And how could that possibly be a bad thing? And I think that they're actually them. Mm-hmm. And and like I've been talking about lately, and it's weird, but it's kind of like, this is my movie. And then everyone that comes into it, I hand them a script and say, all right, here's the part I'd like you to play. Thank you very much. Right. And they're like, all right. And so... I, they're their own people. They spin back out right. of my life, you know? So I I don't know. That's kind of where I see it. I don't know about you. Well, the, the I've met people that have taken this to a limit where it become, it may, for them, and I don't know, it may for them be a, a handicap. Oh, uh, yes. They're ta- they, they think everybody's, you pushed out, so I'm not even real. I'm just, in their mind, some aspect of their mind, and I, they have complete and total control and manipulation over me and everybody they meet. And the, even if that's true, I think that there may be, it may work against them because then, then they're started, then as we talked about, everything is a reflection. So then they become manipulated. <laughs> I, yes, I agree with that completely. And then the other part of it that you've probably bumped into a lot is like me is people run into somebody or their SP or whatever starts mm-hmm. acting a certain way or starts doing drugs or starts doing something crazy, starts kicking puppies, you know, like all, and then they right. go, well, I know everyone's me pushed out so why is he kicking puppies what's going on inside of me and it's like you're no that's him right. he's a puppy kicker not not you like you should be wondering why you're attracted to people that kick puppies but for now right. that's not and so and again I'm, I'm being totally hyperbolic for a point like please don't think it's okay to kick puppies i love puppies. right cute little puppy. but no yeah so exactly <laughs> okay so so but but it, it does not mean that i have absolute complete control over you no, I, it, I do that, not that so. is the one thing that maybe people misunderstand and it, and it gets that's where you start not... getting into magic and witchcraft and, right. and dark magic starts to go more into the affecting people purposefully right. without their permission. And mm-hmm. there's karmic debt to be paid for that. I know I'm sounding like a freak saying all this, but just versus, as I say, leading a horse to water, I can definitely attract and influence a situation where I have a chance to interact with somebody one on one. If I if they're an ex, then I'm gonna try to work on healing our anger between each other, and then I'm gonna manifest a chance to talk with them again. But it's like ultimately you've still got to have that interaction, and you've got to both buy in and shake on it, and basically right. say yes, I want to do this again. That's the thing where people instantly turn off the channel. That's where they instantly unsubscribe. Sometimes it's and I get it. It's not what I want to hear, but right. I they think they want it's to an, hear something different. And the thing that is hard for people to understand, and this is really a great, great way to kind of round out this concept, is if I'm in a low environment, low self environment, low self worth environment, whatever, and I manifest, I, I'm going to use the examples I frequently use because I think it's funny, but I, and I'm at that low level, and I manifest my SP as this tow truck driver. Right. And through a period of time, I start working on myself, I start realizing I deserve better than a tow truck driver. And I, I'd like more, and I start. I go to school, I take classes, I kind of start becoming more, and I start seeing a larger life. Now all of a sudden, mm-hmm. I bump into this stockbroker at some thing I'm at, and now all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, I've got this boyfriend, he's a tow truck driver, I want him to be more like this guy. But the yeah. fact of the matter is, is when you were down low, that's what you were attracted to, that's mm-hmm. what you attracted. That's what exactly. he was vibrating at. Mm-hmm. You've changed yourself. And now you're vibrating at a different level and you can't make that person climb the ladder. You can be a reason they do that does happen, but that's where it starts to get tough is you can't force people to join you if you've evolved. And that unfortunately, or fortunately, really, as you start working through a lot of this law of attraction stuff, you really start to take ownership of your thoughts and feelings Mm -hmm. and it actually does evolve you energetically and you will notice differences.